Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here with you in Dubai for this uh, spring meeting of uh, our broadband commission. So welcome you to this meeting, and particularly for those uh, new commissioners joining us for the first time. So later on, our chairman will invite uh, each of you, newly join us, to say a few words to introduce yourself. I would like to express my warm thanks to my co-chair, co-vice chair, sorry, Madam Irina Bukova. Uh, I think she will join us uh, any moment. We are sorry about that our co-chairs, President Kagami and uh, Carlos Slim, could not be here with us today. As we just heard, this is the first time President Kagami cannot join us at our meeting. And since July 2010, two times a year, as a president of the country, he never missed any meetings. And he really wanted to join us this time. And the last time I met him in Davos in January, he reconfirmed to me again he will come. But for some unexpected circumstances, he cannot join. And I understand that at this moment, no minister will be allowed to leave their country. And the, with very exception that our chairman of communication use uh, was sent by President Kagami to represent him at our meeting. We are very grateful. And Carlos Slim also promised to come to again. Unfortunately, in the middle of February, he told me that for some urgent matters, he cannot come. He asked uh, his uh, uh, very close co collaborator, Huck Carlos, to join, and uh, Huck was not uh, prepared because <coughs> he thought that uh, Mr. Carlos Lima will come, so that uh, he planned a very big industry actions in Madrid these two days exactly, and because he firmly believed that uh, Carlos Lima will come to join us, and then you know, he actually could not leave because exactly today in Madrid, and he has to manage his uh, company's business. So it's also the first time we did not have uh, neither Carlos Slim nor his representative to join us. But they are both very busy for the time moment with uh, unexpected situations, but saying their message very clear to us that uh, they strongly support our commission and its work. And we look forward to seeing them in New York, sub, I think it's the 18th of September. Right? So please mark this date, 18th September, this year in New York. Let me also express my sincere appreciations to our host, Sonia Vaki and his team, who have been fantastic in welcoming and supporting us all. I understand Sonny Vake will join us uh, later today because he has to chair some working sessions this morning, at this moment. Distinguished colleagues, 2015 was a momentous year for the United Nations system. It was, of course, the 70th anniversary of the UN, but more importantly, it saw the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which expanded on the solid foundations laid down by the MDGs in the year 2000. It is our shared conviction that today, more than ever before, broadband and ICTs offer large-scale opportunities to empower individuals, transform economies, and contribute to development. This is a view which I think we all share around this table. The UN is now getting to grips with the detailed exercises of establishing how we are going to measure and monitor the SDGs. And I know many of us here are engaged and closely involved in that work. Ladies and gentlemen, there are also momentous times for the ICT industry. For a start, thanks in part to many of the players assembled here around the table. 
we are seeing an explosion in mobile broadband and 4G around the world. We are seeing significant and accelerating momentum for the awards of 4G license by regulators and 4G networks launched by operators. Recently, joint tests by Telstra, Ericsson, and Qualcomm offer realistic perspective of download and upload speeds of one gigabit per second speeds and 150 megabits per second commercially available over a mobile network by the end of this year. This development will smash the long-standing rough ratio between fixed and mobile network speeds of around 10 to 1. This is a very exciting development, promising fixed-like capacities and uh, throughput over mobile access networks. The potential for development could be enormous. Just to think of all the applications that could be made possible by expanding mobile access capacities in M banking, M health, or M learning applications. So I'm very pleased that my colleague, uh, Madam uh, Irina Bukova, is just coming to join us. So, Irina, you have arrived at a very right moment that I will very soon close my remarks. None of this will come cheaply, however. And at our special session in Davos in January, the Broadband Commission published an estimate of the cost of $450 billion for connecting the next 1.5 billion people by 2020, which is a very considerable sum of money. So obviously, governments and industry will have to work together in partnership to be able to fund and finance new and upgraded networks. We should not be too preoccupied by transmission speeds. However, as I believe, the work of the Broadband Commission has shown the true potential of a broadband for development does not lie in increased speeds, but rather the may the way broadband will change our approach and transform the ways in which we are doing our jobs. For example, how will health and education sectors adapt to the digital transition? Most people would agree with doctors or nursing staff having access to confidential health files in the name of diagnosing and treating diseases. But what would happen if that information were leaked or shared internationally with health insurance providers. I know there were some discussions of that in the working group meeting yesterday. In the classroom, electronic teaching methods can be used to inform and educate and enhance learning, but at the same time, students may get distracted or Derailed. And is there any evidence that the digital learning methods can really replace teachers? Most people would argue that uh, ICTs can be used to enhance access to teachers, including remote access, but can computers ever really replace or substitute even partly for person-to-person -person explanations to help overcome students' learning difficulties? And that is also why I'm very pleased to be here at the GAMS Forum to learn from the broader discussion about how we can transform our way of thinking, not just to accommodate digital technologies into existing, existing ways of educating students, but how to ensure that real-world processes are redesigned to impress and really integrate digital approaches. So distinguished colleagues, as 
this is a working meeting. We are expecting certain things from you in addition to your insights and the debates. I just learned a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, there's a proposal from Datu, our commissioner, with some nice uh, proposals. We had some consultations. I think that we will continue to do debate on those topics raised by our colleagues before the meeting. So I'm looking forward to these uh, uh, meetings to continue those uh, debate. In particular, as the commissioner's targets are now five years old, we would like to ask you for your inputs and insights with regards to modernizing and updating them. Noting that over the past five years, the targets have really helped highlight the Commissioner's work and allowed us to measure the real progress that has made. And this uh, particularly shared by our co-chairs when I talked to them by phone. So, so they expect us to set up some new targets if possible. I'd also like to note that the recent launch of the U.S. State Department's Global Connect Initiative I support this initiative to work together to connect the world, particularly for next 1.5 billion online. And I invite you to pledge your support individually or as the full commission for April 14th this, month, this year in Washington, D.C. It could be good if we can find concrete ways to work together between this meeting and the New York Broadband Commission meeting in the fall, as there are undoubtedly synergies to be gained from a closer alliance between our two bodies. So, dear colleagues, thank you, and let me conclude this brief remarks by wishing you all a very productive and a fruitful meeting. I know passes the floor back to the chair. Thank you very much.